Recycled images call attention to themselves as images, as products of the image-producing industries of film and television, and therefore as pieces of the vast and intricate mosaic of information, entertainment, and persuasion that constitute the media-saturated environment of modern, or many would say, postmodern life. Willem Wees, Recycled Images, The Art and Politics of Found Footage Films. Steam. It is hard to imagine our lives without naming at least a few areas where it is used. From steam trains to dry cleaning and heating, steam has left a big mark in our lives. It all started in 1784 when a Scottish inventor, William Murdoch, built a small-scale prototype of a steam road locomotive in Birmingham that has dramatically changed the means of transportation. Yet it wasn't until 21st of February 1804 when the first recorded steam-hauled railway journey took place. Pulled by Trevithick locomotive, the train was able to make a journey along the 4-foot, four 4-inch four tramway from the Penwy Darren Ironworks to Iber Sion in South Wales. Since then, the design of the steam locomotive has been modified in many ways. However, the general structure stayed the same. The basic form of the locomotive consists of the following items. Firebox, ash pan, water inside the boiler, smoke box, cab, tender, steam dome, safety valve, regulator valve, superheater in smoke box, piston, blast pipe, valve gear, regulator rod, drive frame, rear pony truck, front pony truck, bearing and axle box, leaf spring, brake shoe, air brake pump, center coupler, whistle, and sandbox. Nowadays, steam locomotives were substituted mostly by diesel locomotives, but the use of steam continued in other areas, such as heating. In University of Colorado in Boulder, East District Energy Plant generates steam and chilled water for heating, hot water, and air conditioning. The plant was opened in 2014 and combined with West District Energy Plant is able to provide enough steam and chilled water for peak seasons at the University of Colorado in Boulder. By talking to the facility personnel, I was able to get some insight on the process of how the steam is generated and what other processes are involved prior to the generation of the steam. Sea Boulder has the ability to produce steam at two uh, on-campus power plants that each have different um, dual fuel powered generators combined those produce about 535 million pounds of steam uh, annually. Our um, campus steam production facilities use natural gas to produce the steam primarily. Uh, they can also use uh, diesel fuel in case of emergencies. And that's how we produce the steam for comfort heating and hot water around main campus. So when we bring the water in, uh, initially it comes to us through uh, makeup water softeners, zeolite resin, and uh, those water softeners that we have soften the water initially, that's the first treatment that we put it through. Now, after that, we do sampling on a daily basis to ensure what's in there. We put chemicals in it to prevent it from uh, plating up the pipes and creating uh, layers on the pipes that are going to reduce the efficiency on heat exchange surfaces such as that. A big tank is called the CST, the Condensate Storage Tank. Water comes in, goes to the CST, we maintain that level, so our makeup water and our uh, condensate coming back goes to the CST. And the fact of the matter is anywhere from 94 to 96 percent of the water that we send out as steam comes back to us as condensate. It's pumped from the CST into a device called the deaerator. 
and the deaerator is meant to further treat that water. Uh, the deaerator is a physical means of removing non-condensables and primarily oxygen. So the water is pumped into the deaerator, it uses steam working on that water to heat it up a little bit, which drives the oxygen off. And then the non-condensables are all vented out the roof. So that deaerator is an important part of the function. It goes down into the deaerator storage tank. From the deaerator storage tank, it goes to the boiler feed water pumps. And those feed water pumps are the pumps that squirt the water into the boilers and maintain the proper level in the uh, drum in the boiler. Then we add fire, heat, boil that water, it comes off of steam, the steam comes out the top, we send it through all our pipes out to campus, it goes out there, condenses in the buildings, and returns to us as condensate. In order to bring steam and chilled water to buildings, the University of Colorado in Boulder has constructed a system of steam tunnels that runs underneath the main campus and Williams Village. Primarily built for the ease of pipe maintenance and the ability to lay new cables, the steam tunnels attract students, who are not only unaware of potential hazards, but also trespass the secured area. The obvious reasons that we don't want anyone down there is for, of course, primarily for safety. Right? The steam, um, there's equipment down there that, that can be really hot, and for folks who are untrained um, around that equipment, it's just not safe for them to be in those areas. I was able to talk to one of the students who preferred to stay anonymous to get an insight on what brings him there and whether he knows what hazards this team has. Uh, mostly just the sense of adventure, the threat of uh, getting caught, being in something such as dungeons underneath campus is extremely exciting. Um, it brings a whole different like view of campus sometimes and it gives a very different experience um, when you're constantly on the verge of getting arrested for being down there. <laughs> so steam is dangerous because of the possibility of the burns um, that you might get if any of the pipes um, po uh, leak or uh, pop or anything occurs to them. And while you're down there, you can constantly hear the crackling or expanding of the pipes because of how hot the steam is. And um, it sometimes gets a little scary because it's extremely quiet and eerie down there. Um, but you get used to it. But then there's um, like, the threat of getting burnt by steam is, uh, you know, it's a pretty big thing, but it can't, it doesn't outweigh my sense of adventure in wanting to explore this new different place. And I mean, I have gotten slightly burned or touched by the steam a couple times, and it wasn't bad enough for me to, like, not want to go down there again. Compared to the steam tunnels at the University of Colorado in Boulder, the tunnel system that runs underneath the whole city of New York is extremely hazardous, making it impossible for the maintenance personnel to go there. To solve the problem, a team of scientists and engineers from Honeybee Robotics are designing a wiser robot that can withstand temperatures of up to 300 degrees Celsius and can navigate a maze of steam tunnels that brings heat for everything, from Chinese laundries and Turkish baths to the World Trade Center and the Empire State Building. Spending more than a thousand engineering hours behind schedule and way over budget, the team of scientists tend to go off topic to discuss what matters personally for them, baseball and technology. Up to the beginning of the century, people believed in an absolute time. That is, each event could be labeled by a number called time in a unique way, and all good clocks would agree on the time interval between two events. However, the discovery that the speed of light appeared the same to every observer no matter how he was moving, led to the theory of relativity, and in that one had to abandon the idea that there was unique absolute time. Instead, each observer would have his own measure of time as recorded by a clock that he carried. Clocks carried by different observers would not necessarily agree. Thus, time became a more personal concept relative to the observer who measured it. Stephen Hawking, A Brief History of Time, From the Big Bang to Black Holes. Compared to the facility personnel at the East District Energy Plant and Stephen Hawking, a group of scientists from Honeybee Robotics appear to not understand what they are working on. Instead of developing the robot, they go off topic and focus on their personal matters. There's a clear parallel to John Carpenter's The Thing, where a team of scientists didn't know what they are doing. 
it provides no reassurance or foundation for belief, attacking or undermining nearly everything that we may find comforting about our system of meaning. The body and its strength, the quality of condition of being human, relationships and the trust they require, American individualism, masculinity and gender roles, and our need for closure or clarity. Heather Edison, Cinema's Darkest Vision, Looking into the Void in John Carpenter's The Thing. It is highly unlikely that the steam will not be used in the near future, as it is needed in many areas of our life. It is an efficient way to heat the buildings at the University of Colorado in Boulder and in the New York City. It helps with dry cleaning and drives the turbines in thermoelectric plants. Without William Murdoch's invention back in 1784, it would be impossible to imagine the world we live in. Who knows, but maybe the Titanic would not even sink.